Anyone can learn how to smack a booty with a paddle, and rather quickly. But what makes a dominant truly excellent? Where does a dominant's magic really come from? Stay tuned because by the end of today's video, you will have the ultimate guide for maximizing your dominant energy and effectiveness for mind-blowing play that will leave your bottom a melted sub puddle. <laughs> The dominant can effectively create an environment of safety. Now I tell my community and coaching clients all the time that there is a flow of intimacy. Intimacy being into me you see. That's what we really want out of connection, especially our kinky connections. We want to reveal our true authentic self, no shame, no hiding, no vanilla conditioning, none of that bullshit. We want to totally reveal ourselves and be intimate with someone. And that's what we can accomplish so effectively in a beautiful, healthy DS dynamic. But in order to get there, there are three steps, safety, trust, and vulnerability. You cannot be intimate with someone unless you're willing to be vulnerable. But that vulnerability is impossible if you do not feel like you can trust someone. But what builds trust? safety. And that is why this is our first point here. You as the dominant are an excellent dominant if you can create an environment of safety for your submissive. And this is safety for their body, safety for their soul, and safety for their spirit. Let's break down what that looks like. And in every intimate relationship, but especially those with elements of kink or power exchange dynamics, communication is the key to building this safety, building this trust, building this vulnerability, and building this intimacy. So this revolves around you as the dominant facilitating the correct conversations. That is a huge step in fostering this environment of safety. You need to discuss desires, curiosities, limits, and safe words. And when you do have a full discussion of those curiosities, desires, limits, and safe words, you are going to have an arsenal of knowledge at your disposal that can help you play effectively as well as keep your submissive safe. And to me, safety for the body comes in three different aspects. One being assurance of the dominant's competencies, Two, being an assurance of the dominant's understanding of their submissive's physical and sexual limits. And third, an assurance of the dominant's respect of those physical and sexual limits. So that is what is going to make you an excellent dominant. Creating that environment of safety where your submissive is just so they just not even on their radar. It's not even on their radar that you would do anything outside of their limits violate them in any way. That is that physical sexual element of safety. We take it a step further when we provide soul safety to our submissive. What does soul safety look like? But first, what does our soul even consist of? What is our soul? Our soul consists of three parts. We have our mind, our ability to think and reason. We have our emotions, our ability to feel and express those feelings. And then we have our will, the ability to make choices, think through things, choose not to do this, choose to do this. Okay. You are not a mindless, choiceless robot. You have free will. So our soul consists of those three things, our mind, our emotions, and our will. When you as the dominant are creating this beautiful environment of safety for your submissive, you're also creating soul safety. That's what makes you an excellent dominant. And when it comes to the mind, soul safety consists of the submissive having assurance of the dominant's communication and understanding. Because here's the thing, communication is how intelligence or the lack thereof is exposed. So that's safety for their submissive's mind. Safety for the submissive's emotion includes an assurance of the dominant's emotional intelligence and empathy. And we talked all about this in my video, Green Flags of Healthy Dominance. If you are watching this, you're going to definitely be interested in that video because this is taking the dominance to a whole new level. But that, especially for you newbie subs, you're looking for a checklist. What makes a good dom a safe dom? What makes a good prospect? Okay, watch that video. We talked all about the importance of emotional intelligence and empathy. That will provide your submissive with emotional 
safety, okay? Now, when it comes to their will, that's another level of soul safety. What does that entail? That means that there is the presence of consent and the assurance of the dominance respect of said consent. But we can't just stop there. What does consent mean, children? Consent is a completely mindful, willing, and uncoerced choice to say yes, and the ability to revoke that yes at any time without fear of repercussions. When you can communicate that to your submissive, I'm not trying to coerce. This is all you. You choose what you want. You choose what you don't want. You choose what your limits are. You choose everything. I will respect that and I will honor them. That, that provides such a deep, deep level of soul safety. Beyond that, spiritual safety. What does that look like? That means that the submissive has full and complete assurance that they will not be required or coerced to betray or abandon their own beliefs and boundaries. That's huge, but that will provide such a deep level of safety, which will allow your submissive to trust you faster, and then they'll get vulnerable with you, and then intimacy is the goal. The dominant is present enough to notice and respond to their submissive's nuances, such as tone of voice, cadence, micro expressions, physical tics, etc. Now this is all about presence. This is all about mindfulness. This is all about attention. Okay, that's where the magic is when your submissive feels so held in your attention and energy. Because most people don't experience that level of focused attention. And so when they do experience it at the hands of a dominant for the first time, often a submissive will sink into subspace because they feel a positive level of scrutiny almost. It's I'm being looked at so deeply, so intimately. My dominant is very much paying attention and that will make you an absolutely excellent dominant to the point where I have had distance submissives in other states, other countries, whatever. We would be in a scene together and they would go, how could you hear my smile? I didn't even laugh, I just smiled and you called me out. And you were able to read my energy and direct the scene and direct me all from being on the phone with me? I was even watching them, this is just a phone call. Because you can pick up so much if you're just present. When a submissive's breath catches, when their breathing increases, when they pause, when they pause too long, when they would typically pause too long, but the pause is shorter this time. All of these little things, if you pay attention, they will feel so held in your attention, so held in your energy, and so held in your presence, and that will make you an excellent dom. The dominant's action is substantiated through dominant attitude and energy. I say this because you are not going to be in full dom gear with a paddle or a riding crop or a whip in your hand all the time. And if you don't have the outfit on, if you don't have the implement in your hand, are you still a dominant? Do you still feel dominant in your presence, in your manner, in your energy, okay? Dominance is just as much about attitude and energy as it is in action. So if you don't possess that energy, if you can't break a submissive and put them on their knees by one look, one command, and you have to be in an outfit, you have to have an implement in your hand, you have to have a certain tool or whatever, chances are you're playing more into the role. It's a role play. And there's a disconnect between that authentic dominant energy that your submissive seeks. And your submissive will sense a disconnect and will sense a lack of authenticity there. And it will probably put them in their head and it will probably make their subspace a lot more shallow. So pay attention to that. The dominant is intuitive and attentive to the submissive's desires and needs. So it's very important if you are going to be an excellent dominant to learn these things about your submissive, to learn what incentivizes them, to learn what they need from subspace, to learn what they need from you as a dominant, and to learn their opportunities for inducement or seduction. We'll get to that in a moment, how important that is to know these areas. So that's the first part of it, being aware of these things. But the second half is being able to respond to them, being present in the moment with your submissive, where you can almost start to anticipate these things. You can anticipate 
where your submissive's energy is going to go. You can anticipate this is typically how they make decisions. This is typically how they respond. This is typically their triggers, what they need after a long day, a tiring day, whatever. You should be able to start anticipating those things. Absolutely, the more you get to know your submissive. As a matter of fact, there is actually a hierarchy that I would highly recommend, perhaps demand here, okay? Because this is it. This is the correct structure. Okay, so first on the top of our hierarchy here, we have the submissive's needs. Okay, those come first. Secondary is the dominant's needs. Okay, third is the dominant's desires. And then fourth is the submissive's desires. So you need to know, you need to be aware of your submissive's needs, their incentives, and areas for inducement seduction, where you can kind of push some boundaries in a seductive, erotic way, okay? And respond to those things. And actually, we were talking about this in my Discord, and I have the most amazing community. If you're looking for a healthy, safe community that can teach you about BDSM, walk through this lifestyle with you, my community is absolutely the best. And we have the most brilliant, beautiful, amazing conversations on our Discord. And we got talking about this. What makes an excellent dominant? And this is what one of the girls in my community said. I love how she said this. She goes, to be a good dominant, one must maintain one foot in reality and one foot in the scene. And in the scene, uses their, quote, omniscience to lead the sub through bliss. Ooh, isn't that beautiful how she said that? But I want to point out something. She said omniscience and she put it in quotes because dominance don't know everything. Dominants are not omni anything. Dominants are not omnipotent. Dominants are not omnipresent. Dominants are not omniscient, okay? Dominants are human beings. But you can kind of give off the air to your submissive of godlike levels of knowledge when you are present and attentive and can learn to anticipate these things about your submissive. The dominant is skilled at inducement slash seduction. Now, earlier in this video, I dropped my definition of consent, which I believe is the most accurate, healthy definition of consent out there. Consent is a completely mindful, willing, and uncoerced choice to say yes and the ability to revoke that yes at any time without fear of repercussions. Now, in that definition, I say completely uncoerced. Okay, well, what's the difference between coerced consent, manipulated consent, and inducement and seduction? Essentially, inducement slash seduction is showing an open-minded person the appeals and benefits of your position. So in a BDSM context, a dominant rigor, okay, approaching his open-minded submissive with beautiful photographs of ties or harnesses, even suspension scenes, when they're talking about the connection, they're talking about the intimacy and trust that it builds, and the dominant shares their points of arousal and tells the submissive how enticing and beautiful and sensual they would look in bondage, etc., etc. Okay? That's inducement. That's seduction. That's going... Look at how beautiful it can be over here. Don't you want to come and try it out? Okay, very different from manipulation and coercion. Manipulation is circumventing or violating another's known will or boundaries through coercive means. A dominant rigor knowing that his newbie submissive does not desire or consent to bondage in any way right now but the dominant rigor buys a pair of cuffs anyway and tries to guilt or coerce a different decision. Hey, it's just one time. You shouldn't knock it till you try it. You won't know that you like it, right? Come on, baby, just give it a shot for me if you really loved me. You see the difference, okay? One is, I'm open-minded. Tell me about your side. The other one is, I, I've heard enough, I don't wanna hear more, and then you try to push past that point. So an excellent dominant is very skilled at inducement and seduction. They're not manipulative, it's not about controlling an outcome that's not desired. It's about, hey, you're interested, you're curious, wonderful. Come over here and let me tell you some details. So that's the takeaway here, okay? An excellent dominant does not demand obedience. They seduce submission by winning devotion. And finally, an excellent dominant is decisive and self-confident. 
Okay, now here's the thing. Decisive and self-confident don't mean narcissistic asshole. Okay, decisive and self-confident means I know who I am, I know where my boundaries are, I know what I'm looking for, and I'm not going to tolerate anything less. Okay, very, very different than an abuser, very, very different than a manipulator, someone who wants to violate your boundaries, okay? But why it's so important to be decisive and to be confident is if you are indecisive and you're insecure, okay, your submissive will read that about you and they will respond to that energy and they're gonna get in their head. They're gonna start overthinking and you're gonna lose control of the scene. I don't care how well trained they are, how submissive they are, they're gonna shift inside their mind and in their heart, whether or not they communicate it to you. And that complete freedom and release that they so desire is not going to be attainable because they're watching you trip over yourself. They're watching you trip over your insecurity. Oh, what did they, did they like that? Was that too hard? Was that too soft? Da, da, da. Okay. And that's what we just talked about in my three dominance killers video. We talked about how you cannot be an insecure dominant, an intimidated dominant, or you cannot feel like an imposter as a dominant. So if you're struggling with any of those three things, insecurity, intimidation, or imposter syndrome, go watch that video, three dominance killers. Because not only do I tell you how it's affecting your dynamic, I give you practical steps to overcome that, okay? So dominance, you wanna up your game, you wanna take it to the next level with your submissive, implement these things, okay? Because this will make you so much more present, mindful, intuitive, and you will start really flowing as one with your submissive's energy and that. Is what you're